Mr. GM here has an early look at four new outdoor world events for The War Within. I love this stuff. I've always told you guys world content is my favorite content. Makes servers feel alive, makes things feel like new again. Uh, if I could have all world content, I would. It's my favorite stuff to do in the game. So let's see what kind of world content we're going to be getting here in The War Within. Hello there and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about world events and more specifically we're going to talk about the four brand new outdoor world events in the War Within. Uh, this video is going to cover all of the information the we know so uh, far. Uh, obviously we are just in alpha so there's going to be a bunch of stuff we don't know uh, but this is going to be kind of a general outline of what to expect with your outdoor today. events in the War Within. But before we jump into that I do want to send a special thanks to the sponsor of this video and that is Boot. Dev. This video Ooh, is sponsored by Boot.dev. The folks at Boot.dev believe the smartest way to learn code is to make sure you're never bored. Boot.dev is online, self-paced, and feels like a captivating RPG game. With Boot.dev, you'll learn back-end web development from start to finish in Python and Go programming languages. The platform is designed nice. to get you writing a ton of code, because getting your hands on the keyboard and shipping projects is the only real way to learn. At Boot.dev, they never want a student feeling like they spend their money on something that isn't helping them. So they offer a 30-day, no questions asked refund policy, and a free demo of every course and its interactive features. Dang and yeah. if you're ever completely stuck or just want to see how the instructor wrote the code, there's solutions available for every challenge on the site. So click the link in the description box and use my code, MrG to get 25% off is, your 25 first payment off. for boot.dev. That's 25% off your first month or your first year, depending on the subscription you choose. And thanks again to boot.dev for sponsoring this video. Right, so yes, outdoor world events, certainly something yeah, that we saw uh, crop up quite a lot in the Dragonflight expansion with things like time rifts, super blooms, sieges, soups, and all sorts of things like we that. We did get a lot of outdoor. Uh, in the war within. I, we... I just, yeah, now that he's saying it, we did. We basically got an out piece of outdoor world content almost for every patch, which has been nice, and they've been pretty enjoyable. The super bloom was fun. I did enjoy those time rift things, and that, that, with you go into the Murloc world and all, those, those things were cool. They were enjoyable. Even the Hearthstone event. The amount of people that gathered up for that, it was it was a fun thing. We do get some new ones. We have four as of Alpha in the different zones. Some of them kind of spread between a lot of zones, and some of them are specifically to one zone. Uh, so yeah, as mentioned in this video, we're going to kind of just breeze over them and kind of go over the information we know so far. But of course, like deeper dives and full guides and things will come out nearer the time uh, of launch when we know all these specific details. So let's begin with the first one, and that is Theater Troop. Uh, this takes place in okay. the first zone in the isle of dawn this one i found to be extremely similar to time rifts so this will occur oh, nice. once an hour once the game goes live and the basic idea of this is just to increase the audience approval bar uh, it's like a theater so it's kind of similar to like arden wield so it's like time rifts and the arden wield stage thing at the same time it's kind of fun there are various different shows which occur each time it comes up which is really fun so it gives you a little bit of lore damn those griffins in the background look great um uh, so this is an event happening in the theater. This looks, is this in the city? Or it's in the first zone. It, do, it does look there, pretty cool. Uh, as well. And the point here is to increase the audience approval bar at the top of the screen. And much like Time Rifts and the Super Bloom, you'll get rewards every time you get to 2,500. Uh, as of right now on the alpha, because there's just not enough people... We don't know what's in the bag, but you'd imagine it's going to be like, you know, your Valor Stones and various things like right, that. Right, so this works uh, like the Super Bloom. You get a better bag the more you fill up each notch here. Uh, okay. Just to kind of improve your character. But I don't think it's going to be anything too crazy. So basically what happens here is uh, once you get there and the show is starting, uh, you have five minutes to do prep. This five minutes is just kind of like clicking stuff or giving out tickets, painting props, uh, killing NPCs, just kind of sorting out the stage area. I believe these are individual to you. Uh, as you run around kind of prepping for the show for five minutes okay. and increasing that audience score. Uh, once the five minute prep is over, the show will begin. Uh, as mentioned, there are various different shows which do occur, which are really fun. Uh, they all have something different going on, like you've got to run around and cheer for a guy, or you've got to um, you you know, attack these things, or defend That's... these things, and do these various things, and click things around the stage. It's all very fun uh, and exciting. Sure. So yeah, very, very interesting there. Uh, so yeah, you just continue to play out more tasks, increasing your audience score, uh, and this then... seems like a uh, world event on a smaller scale. I prefer like the big boy, you know, invading a zone and big, you know, big bosses, things to kill, tank and spank kind of stuff. 
Uh, but this this seems like a nice little fun thing to do on the side. It finishes and you do like a big crescendo and then just kind of bow to the audience, which is really fun. Obviously, as said on Alpha, it's just kind of me and maybe a couple other people doing it. Uh, so this is just going to be absolutely nuts when it launches. There's just going to be so many people running around uh, and it's going to be a bit wild. Yeah, especially early this on. one we do actually know the rewards for. There is a weekly quest uh, just to complete the show and gain some audience score, uh, kind of what you'd expect. Uh, this rewards veteran level gear. Uh, uh, some reputation and some key shards to uh, build up some more delve keys for your delve adventures. Oh, okay. So generally speaking, the theater troop seems like a lot of fun. Uh, Going to be a lot more fun, obviously, once more people are testing it and trying it out. Well, I would imagine once beta launches, this one's definitely going to get a lot of action. The next event is the World Soul Memory event. So this is actually going to be very similar to the pre-patch event. Uh, oh, if you've okay. seen like Belly Law's video. I was going to say this looks like the pre-patch event with the uh, memories of things. On the pre-patch event, it's extremely similar to that, uh, but this is the kind of version that we're going to get uh, in Kaz Algar. So as of Alpha, this event is up constantly. However, it does rotate every eight hours through the different zones. So basically, at okay. any given time, there'll be two active with eight or so hours to complete it. Once you head over to the location of this World Soul memory, uh, you'll have this like glowing orb, uh, and you can click that, and this is where you're going to choose your kind of difficulty. Uh, there are three difficulties oh. for the World Soul memories. You have the Radiant interesting there's three difficulties to this world event what uh maximum difficulty why can't he do it it's locked you gotta unlock it i guess or uh tenorfold reward mythic challenge reward okay echo you have many radiant echoes which is the same difficulty as the radiant echoes but rewards more loot and then you have the radiant discord so this is the hardest difficulty and this is unlocked by completing an achievement called a series of echoes which is just to complete all of the Dude, different okay. world soul memories around kazal gar uh, this version will be slightly more challenging and death removes you from the echo so the way that an oh, echo man. works is that once you click it you go inside and kind of the area phases into this sort of past experience uh, of the this area of the zone. There cool are eight animation. different events which occur around the Kaz Algar. You have Ancient Explorers, the World Carvers, the Old Gods Forsaken, a Wounded Soul, Reign of the Old Gods, Descendants of Distant Waters, Elemental Fury. Oh Fe shit, we got Naga content coming. I keep saying, when, when the hell is Azara going to pop up in this expansion? We, I, She has to at some point, right? I mean, if anything comes up with the Old Gods, Nazath there playing in the background still. The last time we saw uh ajara she was you know uh, escaping the south and then got pulled into the fog and all that shit who knows but i feel like there's there's gonna be a point where we reintegrate with the uh with the naga and ajara fury and primal predators uh so as mentioned once you get in there you kind of phase and you have this kind of like a little vibes, bit of yeah. lore uh that's going on so it's a really nice way to kind of tell you some of the history of Kaz Algar and what has been going on there uh, while we haven't been around. Uh, this actually does require a currency called Radiant Echoes. Uh, so as mentioned with the difficulty- Of course, uh, of course, yeah, yeah. More currencies, yeah, that's the good thing about world events. They just give us more currencies because we don't have enough in the game already. Yeah. Uh, Radiant Echo <laughs> costs one Radiant Echo and then many Radiant Echoes Blizzard cost loves 10. So if man. you're putting 10 in, uh, you will get more rewards for doing so. Uh, this currency, we do not know where it comes from uh, as of right now and is not in the currency tab. So it's going to be in your bag, which is slightly annoying because it is soulbound. Why do they do that? I, I don't know. Uh, so once you're in the Echo, you've got five minutes to kill stuff. When you're killing stuff, you're automatically getting Valor Stones, which are your new Flight Stones, and Coffer Key Shards, which when you That's combine nice. 100 of them, uh, will give you a blue Delve Key. And this is just automatically looted uh, when you're killing stuff in this Echo. So it's just a massive bombardment of killing a bunch of... So it seems like most of these world events are going to be about getting Delve Keys and, I guess, Flight Stones, which well, Flight Stone grind is, is you know, that's good because I don't always feel like doing dungeons or raids to get flight stones, so this will be a good way to do it. But the delve keys seem like the main uh, main interest behind these stuff. You'll also notice once you're in there, you will have a new bonus objective. Uh, completing this bonus objective will kind of complete the echo and kind of give you the credit towards the achievement uh, and things like that, and obviously give you a little bit more rewards. The NPC required to complete this objective does actually pop up just one minute uh, before the echo completes, so make sure you're keeping an eye out for that uh, once you're in there so you can get that credit for completing it. Um, but generally speaking, it is just killing normal NPCs, rares, and and things like that around the echo this can be done in a group as well as far as i'm aware uh, so this is just going to be a really good source of getting valor stones and coffer key shards uh, but beyond that it doesn't seem like any other rewards uh, are available from the world soul okay. memory as of right now 
the next event is the spreading the light event this is in the hallow full zone oh, so this is actually the least known Halo event cool. of all the world events it's a little bit strange i don't really know if it's fully implemented or not but we're going to talk about it anyway uh so as mentioned this occurs in hallow full currently the timing of this event is unknown it just seems to be happening all the time on the alpha but i would imagine this is just a theory that this is going to occur uh, every yeah. time the void phase is up so when the big crystal i was just about to say that this this event probably has something to do with the switching of the void crystal blizzard mentioned that not only does the crystal change and the environment change but the mobs in Hallow Fall change when the crystal turns like this. So we're going to see a switching of, you know, whatever the, you know, typical mobs of Hallow Fall be, all of a sudden going to maybe more of a Nerubian-based, Void-based uh, uh, life forms everywhere. So that'll probably be kick off this event that he's talking about right now. When the sky uh, turns into a void thing, you would imagine that this is when the event's going to be active. Yeah. Uh, so this will be, as of right now, every three hours for 30 minutes. So when you're doing this event, basically what happens is there's just a bunch of quests around and a world quest as well. Uh, and you want to be killing these mushrooms to get an item called a Radiant Remnant. These remnants are used to light key flames around this area. So there were lesser key flames. Uh, they only require three. So once you've done that, okay. uh, that'll spawn a NPC to do a quest. This is a weekly quest, it seems. Uh, and then once you've done that quest, you'll just get, you know, some rewards. But as of right now, there are no yeah, rewards. Yeah, it makes sense again that this is a void crystal thing because uh, it looks like like you're lighting up a bunch of areas in Hallow Fall to keep people safe from whatever's happening in the shadows and the void once the crystal turns voidy. So that's probably, like we said before, that's, it kicks off when the void, when the uh, crystal transitions. For this. Uh, there are also major ones as well, which will require 20. Once you've done that, a bonus objective will pop up. And once again, you'll just complete that bonus objective for some rewards. We have no idea what the rewards are. Uh, this just seems like a bit of a strange event. I don't, as I said, this is definitely one of the ones we know the least about. It's really interesting. Uh, so I'd imagine over the next couple alpha builds and beta builds, we'll know a lot more about this. But certainly just kind of running around, killing mushroom people, getting some remnants, lighting the key flames, uh, completing the quest. But yeah, quests currently give no rewards uh, as of alpha. Uh, fun side fact, I hate mushrooms. My wife loves them. I hate them. So I'll be fine with killing them. Alpha, but you'd imagine it's going to be like veteran what gear kind of things like that, mushrooms. like most Gross. of the other uh, sort of uh, world events. But yeah, spreading the light, certainly uh, a bit of a mystery as of right now. The final one is Awakening the Machine. This is actually really great. So this is actually in an instance, uh, and we don't know the timing of this. I think it's going to be up all the time, but we don't actually know. Uh, this is actually in the Ringing Deeps, but you speak to an NPC and get teleported in there. Okay. Uh, once you're in there, it is essentially Proving Grounds 2.0. Remember Proving oh. Grounds? Uh, yeah, this is cool. essentially Proving Grounds 2.0. So the way that this works is that once you get in there, uh, you'll have a box that you can click, and this will give you various powers, similar to like Torgan, these powers do stack yeah, as well. Blizzard so loves the anima powers from Torghast. They keep trying to find new ways to implement them. But this is cool, you know, and basically giving you a new, uh, some new little powers to do this event if with. If you get them twice, you can just get like extra haste or something Damage like Damage it takes fit by 50%, reducing all the, that's a nice tanking one. So it's increased abilities, increased uh, crit, this stuff like that. that. Uh, depending on what the power is. So once you've picked your power, you speak to the earthen guy in the middle and that will start the waves. You'll get a bunch of waves of NPCs coming at you that you have to attack and make sure they don't kill the earthen in the middle. If the earthen dies, that is the end of your round so you just get waves of npcs you're going to be killing them and clearing the area uh, just through nice. these waves and every five waves you'll have a break uh, when the break comes up you can pick a new power that's where the stacking powers come in oh i was uh, about to say do the power stack or do you get a new one if they stack that's cool uh, so if you get the same power again you can just kind of stack that up and nice. be super powerful but yeah it seems like it's just like killing npcs really and keeping the earthen alive uh, this appears to be a solo activity uh, but it might be a group activity in the future but as of right now it seems to be a solo activity and currently as of right now there are no rewards for this uh, you'd imagine this is probably just going to give veteran gear and things like that but as of right now if the earthen dies you just get ported out that's it your go is over okay. uh, there is a bunch of achievements though linked to this to get to certain levels of waves uh, it seems to be capping out at 50 which is pretty difficult it was quite easy in one of the first builds but they've definitely ramped up the difficulty level uh, of this activity but it seems like a lot of fun and certainly will develop over the next couple alpha and beta builds cool so that's it that's kind of an early look at the four new outdoor world activities in the war within uh, there is also like an activity in Arshgahet oh, to help some npcs but i don't think that's actually a world event i wouldn't what is this kind of this kind of reminds me of like uh what's it called followership 
class it as a world event. These appear to be the four world events we're going to be getting at launch of the War Within. So guys, let me know what you think of these events. I really, really like the World Soul Memory event. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. As mentioned, that is very similar to the pre-patch event. I didn't get to test the pre-patch event, but yeah, certainly we will be doing that soon. Uh, also, the Awakening Machine is very humbling because I am bad at this you game. Crushed, huh? Certainly uh, going to be fun for people who are good at the game. So yes, thank you very much for watching, guys. If you like this video, please do leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to support me outside of YouTube, I'm also on Patreon and I'm on Twitter at MrGMYT. And I have a partner Discord channel as well. And as Ooh. mentioned, I am streaming on Twitch.tv slash MrGM. Yes, you want to see does. me stream World of Warcraft, War Within Alpha. We've been doing a ton of War Within Alpha testing uh, pretty much Twitch every day channel. over on Twitch. So if you want to check me out, guys, I'm over on Twitch.tv slash MrGM every single day. And with that, guys... I'll see you next time. Yeah, great video. It, it, none of these events are necessarily what I like to see in a world event. I kind of like to see like some, uh, I don't know, like world ending kind of stuff where you makes you feel like, you know, an army's invading and you got to push back against it and it takes like hundreds of people to get it done. That's the kind of world content I like. Uh, but these, these seem good as a starter. We'll probably get more world content going forward. And you best believe if we get more world content, we're guaranteed to get another thing more currencies. That's right. Blizzard loves their currencies. Uh, good video from Mr. GM. We'll have to see what else we get in the war within.